Well, hello everyone. Um, let's see, I'm shooting this video a little bit different. <clears throat> it's gonna be a three-parter and I won't be sharing the amount I paid for it until the very end because there's quite a lot of stuff. It might be, I might be able to do it in two parts, but I wanna cut it down time-wise. Um, my videos generally are, are you know, kind of on the long side. So uh, most people, most of you seem to stick through till the end. But um, like I said, this is a big one. And yeah, it's just a lot all at once. And so I really want to make sure that I cover everything and not, um, not overwhelm everyone, <laughs> including myself. But uh, anyway, like I said, I probably won't, or not probably, I'm not gonna reveal how much the price I paid until the end of the third piece. Um, so anyway, uh, it's a, here, let me flip this around. Let's see what we got. Let's kind of give you a glimpse of what's going on in, with this and grab this first tray. Let's see. Let's see if we can get kind of a good shot of it here. Without too much glare. All right, so let's start off here with, well, let's just go left to right. Um, some outside calipers. There, get some adequate light so we can see what's going on here. And get close up. So we got some calipers. Uh, I'm not sure what brand those are. It doesn't really say. It's on there somewhere, but, and then tape measure, uh, Atlas ometers, ometers. It's a master measuring tape. These tapes I think were manufactured by the company. I am assuming it's master. And then they had promotional badges put to them so you could like your company could buy them and then put your logo on them and hand them out to people or whatnot so it's kind of cool little retro thing what else we got we have some plain irons uh kind of rusted up but they look like they could be cleaned up probably in pretty good shape and there's one two three four five six seven eight and ten eleven twelve thirteen yeah there's like 13 or 14 in there um, always handy to have the planes usually that these go for are usually missing them so um, and then the tool rolls kind of nice as well. So let's see what else we got. A couple of Stanley plain caps. One of them's got green paint and the other one's got the original orange. Uh, let's see, we got a cap for a spoke shave. Stanley blade and breaker for a plane. What is that? A uh, like one and three quarters wide, something like that. I'm gonna go actually get a readable tape measure here real quick. And then what do we got? A blade for a spoke shave, Stanley 
Made in Canada. That's a little, what is it? Two inch. Yeah. And then a Stanley Sweetheart. Blade and Breaker. Two inch. Let's see if we can. See that made in Canada also. Um, Stanley Sweetheart Blade. Let's see, what is this one? Stanley Rule and Level. It's a bit older. Two inch. Well, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna grab a wire brush. Real quick. Sorry about that. Tripping over stuff. Can't quite read it. Something in Brothers Warranted Cast Steel. It might say Nelson, but I don't think it does. I think it says something else. It's not one that I'm familiar with, so. I'm not quite sure. If you know, uh, leave a comment below. Um, I'm gonna look at, look at it more later. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? glue on there. Oh. DR Barton maybe. Yeah. Rochester, New York. See if you can see that or not. Anyway, um, what else we got here? Uh, Stanley Main USA and Stanley New Britain, Connecticut. They're both the same. And I don't know, what is that? Approximately one and a quarter blades, plain blades. It's kind of nice finding some extra parts. Uh, I usually find planes without any. So, um, oh, sorry. So we got here. Those looks like the same as the other. Let's see. Do I have some oil? Well, that one's even harder to read. <laughs> I 
Anyway, that's the same brand as this one. So um, I'm assuming for the, I mean, they're different sizes. Anyway, yeah, that's not super exciting. <laughs> Uh, me not being able to see what's up. I think I should get a magnifying glass or something, but uh, we got a Garvey fast cut adjustable knife carton cutter. I've had these before, but never in the box. Um, so they're kind of cool. Sounds like the blades are in spare blades are on the inside. The ones that I've had of these have always just had like the last blade in them because I don't, I think there's some kind of proprietary blade, but they're pretty cool knives. It's been used. It's got some, looks like drywall dust or plaster on it or something, but still the retro box is pretty nice uh, vintage thing. So uh, what do we got here? We got a you're not familiar with these they are let's see if I can remember how they work they are razor blade sharpeners so you put your razor blade in there and it's got a little strop on the bottom of it and You go back and forth. It's kind of nifty. Um, not sure <laughs> how this. Uh, not really sure how this goes back. At, oh, there we go. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, let's see who's that made by. Oh, Rolls Razor, made in England. Yeah, Rolls Razor. I don't know if you can see that with the shine, but it's got a patent number on it. Um, see if I can get this closed with the... Hmm. It's odd that it won't. Anyway, I'll monkey with it later. What do we have here? We have a Imperial Brass Tube Cutter. And I think that's to get the, like when you cut a piece of copper pipe for plumbing, you can get the flash off of it with that. Kind of nifty, you never see a brass one anymore. Or ever, really, like. So, pretty heavy duty. Anyway, let's see what else we got. A Dunlap combination stone, fine and medium. Still in the box, got a little chip on it, but not bad. <clears throat> to prevent the stone from glazing re requires merely the proper use of good thin oil. Uh, and then I can't read the rest of it because it got some dust on it. Let's see. The purpose of using oil on a sharpening stone is to float the particles of steel that are cut away from the tool, thus preventing them from filling in between the grits and causing the stone to glaze. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. That'll probably go into my sharpening 
box where I keep all my stones. What do we got here? American Double Grit Emery Oil Stone for Carpenters. Use thin oil. Keep your tools sharp. General Mechanics Tools. Made in the USA. A E7 Combination Oil Stone. And honestly, that doesn't look like it's ever been used. So... nice and again of course the old packaging it's really sweet what do we got here we got uh number x46 Luf lufkin extension rule oil joints it's in pretty good shape Oh, well, this one, does that slide? It has a brass slide extension on it. I don't think the other ones of these that I've ever had has that. So that is a very nifty. And like I said, it's in really nice shape. What else? We have looks like an assortment of wood handled stuff. Well, let's actually start with this. this is a Stanley Sweetheart Spoke Shave, number 51. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, I always like those. Um, what do I got here? Fletcher, number one. Glass cutter. A little bit of green paint. Kind of cool. And here a something Jennings. I think that might be a little nail puller. I'm not hundred percent sure wood handle uh, we got a little chisel unmarked or it is maybe I don't know it's pretty dirty and grimy so I'll have to clean that up and find out Let's see we got a turn screw and I don't see any markings on it at all. It's got a brass ferrule, ferrule, and it's not completely trashy. You just could clean up. Nice little wood handle one. Oh, this looks like some kind of large sewing needle, maybe for leather or canvas or something. Stitching up, beautifully made. Looks like the handle might maybe, I don't wanna speak out of turn on wood, but it might be um, ebony maybe, I don't know. It's very sharp, a little blast brass ferrule on there too. Um, let's see what else we got. A little wood handled hook. 
I don't see any markings. A little wood handle all, but the ferrule is missing. And then a little curved one that is marked. But I can't read it. It's like half missing. So anyway, I know that that not being able to read those is not super exciting, but <clears throat> let's see what we got here. Some perfect handled screwdrivers. Let's see. Unmarked. Some of this stuff out of the way here. This one says number two on both sides of it. It doesn't seem to have a manufacturer. Uh, this one has wings on the side of it. I don't know if that's an indicator of the brand. But otherwise it seems to be uh oh not quite unmarked. But unreadable at the moment. Huh. Anyway, if you know, drop a comment. Um, I'll find out as soon as I clean them all up. But here's another one that's got a narrow tip, completely covered with paint. A little baby one. Uh, it just says Germany on it. I've seen those before where they just say Germany, but it's a, kind of a nice little cute one, I guess. Um, yeah, so here's another one. It just says Germany. But this one's in better shape. Uh, they kind of look like they're the same manufacturer, like even the same wood and everything. This one's got a hex head right, right there. It says Dun Dunlap. So... Yeah, same company. Done that. Um, some kind of screw starter, uh, but it's also, let's see if I can, come on. Hollowed out a bit. So maybe to carve out deeper into the, a deeper hole. Not seeing a manufacturer on that, but it's really well made. That's nice. Let's see what do we got here. A ratcheting screwdriver. Let's see. I can see who that's made by. Hmm, it's Yankee. So the tip needs a little work, but. It's in pretty okay shape. It's got some rust, but that can be taken care of. And then, I don't know what that is. It's like some kind of little knob <laughs> or something. And getting close to the end, we got a couple of random task specific pieces of metal, I would say, but 
Uh, focus. I don't know, I think it's like set up. Wants to keep focusing on all the different things at the same time. So it's not had that problem before necessarily, or at least not as bad, but let's see. That might be a little bit better. But this one has a hole in it on one end and it's flat and then pointed at the other. And this one's almost like a modified like spade trowel diamond shaped end. And the shaft is like hexagon. So I don't know what those are for. Um, and then we've got two more things here. <clears throat> we've got these crazy tweezer plier things that have like a fine adjustment on it. I don't know, I don't see a manufacturer. They look medical, which is fine by me. I always like some medical stuff. There's some weird stuff out there, but obviously this person <clears throat> got a hold of these and decided to use them for something they weren't designed for. So, and then last but not least, we got these weird little, I don't know, scissor. Then there's like a bleed on the end of it. I'm not quite sure what these are for. They lock. Um, oh, there's a Patent, May 29th, 1877. Don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's a name. Osborne. And Company, something like that. Something Osborne and Company. Very interesting. I can't really tell how sharp they are with gloves, but interesting nonetheless. So that is it for this drawer. Um, hopefully I didn't, oh, I gotta fix it. Hopefully I didn't take too long. Um, we will, or I will, do the second drawer next time and then the third one which I think is not going to take so long because it is whoa <laughs> it is only got a lot of one thing in it and then the very bottom is mostly the larger stuff so we can go through that um I'm gonna try to get this out in three Three parts, I think it's pretty reasonable, but um, anyway, thanks for hanging in there and watching, uh, liking, subscribing if you choose to do that. And I hope that you're all out there, you know, finding some stuff. Um, yeah, uh, again, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. How does this work? Thumbs up, no? Two thumbs up. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, we're hitting a half hour now. So, you know, keep scrounging and I will see you next time. Bye.